Hi everybody, it's Mr. Sunito, and I've got another book for you today, and I think I'm going to try some more magic. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Wait, this isn't the book. All right, let me get rid of this. Let's try it again. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three. It worked. Today's book is called Down the Road. Are you ready? Let's read. This book is called Down the Road by Alice Shirtle, and it's illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Take a look at the cover. What do you see? What do you notice? What do you think this book's going to be about? Well, this girl, her name is Hetty. What can you tell about the kind of place that Hetty lives in? Hmm. What is she doing? Now, do you remember the last book we read with Bailey? Bailey Goes Camping? Well, Bailey took a camping journey. Hetty is a little girl, but her parents have decided that she is old enough to walk to the store by herself. Let's read to find out about Hetty's journey. And this book is really big, so I might have to squeeze some of the pages in. Down the road. Oh, look at this. What kind of place does this look like to you? It almost makes me think of a farm. Hetty lived in a little gray house with a big stone chimney and a screen door that squeaked in a friendly way for comings and goings. In back of the house was a tin roof shed where Papa mended other people's trucks and tractors and cars that weren't running anymore. So you can see that right over on this page. In front of the house was a dusty road that ran through a field, up over a hill, and out of, and out of sight. Sometimes Hetty walked with Mama down the dusty road. Sometimes she walked with Papa, but Hetty had never ever been allowed down the dusty road all by herself. Hmm, why do you think Hetty has never been allowed to walk down the dusty road by herself? Let's see. I think you can see everything you need right here. One afternoon, Mama said, Mr. Birdie's speckled hens are laying. Oh, they must be laying what, boys and girls? Eggs. Wouldn't fresh eggs be nice for tomorrow's breakfast? She sighed and shook her head. <sighs> I just don't have time to walk to Mr. Birdie's. It's too bad. Scrambled eggs for breakfast, said Papa. If only I had the time, I'd go myself. I can do it said Hetty. I'm big enough to go to Mr. Birdie's all by myself. Well, said Mama. Look at this big girl, said Papa. Hetty can do it, Mama. Absolutely. Papa gave Hetty a handful of coins and a wicker basket. One dozen eggs, he told her. Twelve big beauties. No cracks. Be sure to say thank you to Mr. Birdie, said Mama. Come straight home, said Papa. Don't dilly-dally, said Mama. That means don't be silly. Don't waste time. Oh, these illustrations are wonderful. Squeak bang went the screen door and Hetty was on her way. She marched straight down the dusty road, swinging the basket and jingling the coins in her pocket. This is what it's like to be grown up, she thought. You have money in your pocket, and you can go down the road all by yourself. 
She listened to her shoes going thup, 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 and she made up some walking words to say as she went along. Down the road, one and two, eggs for breakfast, howdy do. Eggs for breakfast, clickety clack. Eggs for breakfast, not a crack. Bump went the basket against Hetty's knee. Bump, bump. When this basket is full of eggs, thought Hetty, I'll walk my smoothest so they won't roll around and break. She practiced walking as if she were skimming across a frozen pond on ice skates. Pretty soon, her walk was so smooth that she balanced the wicker basket on her head and climbed all the way to the top of the hill before it fell off. With the basket over her arm, Hetty raced down the other side, her pigtails flying. She felt inside her pocket to make sure the coins were still there. Then she continued down the road, through a meadow, across a stream, past a house or two, down a street, around a corner, up some steps, and into the cool shadows of Mr. Birdie's Emporium and Dry Goods Store. Look at that. Now, think about Hetty's walk to the store. Do you think it was a long walk or a short walk? What makes you think that? Well now, said Mr. Birdie, here's Hetty all by herself. Good day, Mr. Birdie, said Hetty, just as Mama would have said. I'd like a dozen eggs, please. She slapped the coins down on the counter, just as Papa would have done. Twelve big beauties, no cracks. While Mr. Birdie put twelve big brown eggs into the wicker basket, Hetty walked slowly down a cluttered aisle, looking closely at cans and cartons and bolts of fabric, just as if she might decide to buy something else. Before she left, she remembered to say, thank you, Mr. Birdie. Around the corner went Hetty, down the street, past a house or two, doing her smooth walk and holding the basket carefully so it wouldn't bump against her knees. When she came to the stream, she stopped with one foot on a fallen log. What if it wobbles, thought Hetty. What if this log wobbles me off and I drop the eggs? She stepped down into the cold water and splashed across the stream, straight across to the other side. No use taking a chance, thought Hetty. Squish, squish, went Hetty's wet shoes on the dusty road. Squish, 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 and Hetty said her walking words. Down the road, one and two, eggs for breakfast, howdy do. Hetty was so busy doing her smooth walk and saying her walking words and admiring the eggs in the basket that she didn't see a rock sticking up in the middle of the road. She walked along, getting closer to the rock with every step. Eggs for breakfast, clickety-clack. Eggs for breakfast, not a... Ouch!
Hetty's toe hit the rock, and she stumbled forward. She had to hop and jump to keep from falling. Inside the, bas- inside the basket, the eggs rattled together with clinky sounds. Oh no, said Hetty. She knelt down on the road and took the eggs out of the basket. Scarcely breathing, she examined every one. Not a crack, she said with a sigh. She wiped each egg off on her shirt and put them all back inside. (sighs) Boys and girls, how do you think Hetty feels after she checks the eggs and finds they are not cracked? Hmm, I know how I feel. Then she was on her way again, this time keeping a sharp eye out for obstacles on the road. She's looking for problems. That's what obstacles could be. It seemed like a very long road. The sun was hot, and by the time she reached the meadow, Hetty was tired. But there, in the middle of the meadow, was a big, wild apple tree, full of bright red apples, sweet, juicy, crackly, crisp apples. Papa's favorites, Mama's too. Hetty herself was very fond of apples. Just three, thought Hetty, and then I'll go straight home. She made her way through the weeds, snagging foxtails in her socks and holding the egg basket carefully in front of her. And foxtails are a kind of plant, and these are, it's hard to see, but these little plants down here, I think, are the foxtails. Hetty picked an apple for Mama. She picked an apple for herself. Now for a big, red, papa size apple. She reached up, up, and the wicker basket tipped just a little bit. She reached higher, higher, And the basket tipped a little more, a little more. Hmm. What do you think is going to happen next? Ooh. Ooh, I'm so worried. Oh, no. Splat. Hetty wanted to cry. She wanted to hide. She wanted to climb up into the apple tree and never, ever come down. She didn't want to go home and tell Papa and Mama there would be no eggs for breakfast. Up she climbed, right up into the old apple tree, as high as she could go. And there she sat, just thinking and feeling sad and not wanting to go home. After a long time, Hetty saw something moving way down the dusty road. It was Papa. Hetty made herself as small as she could. Papa, whose sharp eyes never missed a thing, came striding through the tall meadow grass. He came walking through the grass. So, he said, this is where I find you? Is this how you bring eggs home for breakfast? I was picking apples for us, said Hetty with a sob. I broke the eggs, Papa, every single one. Papa nudged the basket with the toe of his boot. I see, he said. And you climbed up into the tree to think it over. Suddenly, his face wrinkled into a smile. There's no finer place than an apple tree to think things over. And Papa climbed up beside her. Does Papa look mad? No. 
He's not upset. Why do you think he's not mad? Mm. By the time Mama came through the meadow grass, there was a pile of apple cores underneath the tree. Hedda and Papa had chins sticky with apple juice. So what have they been doing? Hmm, what are apple cores? Well, it says there were a pile of apple cores underneath the tree. That's the part of the apple that you usually don't eat. So what were Hetty and Papa doing in the apple tree? Sounds like they might have been eating apples. Mama nudged the basket with the toe of her shoe. Just look at this. I'm waiting for 12 beautiful eggs. And what do I find? Shells. I'm sorry, Mama, said Hetty. I dropped the eggs. I was trying to pick some apples. Find sweet apples, said Papa. Mama stared up into the tree. Well, well, she said, just look at the two big birds in the apple tree. Papa whistled like a magpie bird. Tweet, 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 went Hetty. Pretty soon, there were three big birds in the apple tree. Mama put her arm around Hetty. I'd almost forgotten how lovely the world looks from a tree, Mama said. Everyone should spend some time in an apple tree, Papa agreed. Absolutely. Hmm. Who are the three big birds in the apple tree? That looks like a lot of fun. When they walked back home along the dusty road, they had not one egg among them, but Mama's skirt and Papa's pockets and Hetty's basket were full of sweet red apples. And the next morning, there was apple pie for breakfast. How about that? How do you like them apples? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we have a little writing to do about this. So why don't you hang on while I get all set up. Okay, now we're ready to do the writing. And of course, you'll put it in your writer's notebook and you'll need a pencil and some crayons. Now, just like we did last time, let's take our pencil and let's copy down the title of the book down the road. And then draw a line down the middle. We're going to do something that looks a lot like what we did with Bailey Goes Camping. We're going to think about the problem. What was the problem in this story? So take your pencil and at the top of the first side, let's write problem. Now, let's think. What was Hattie's problem in the story? Now, I'm going to make it a little bit harder today than yesterday, but I can give you some words maybe to help you out a little bit. Let's see. Um, hmm, what would be a good word? How about Hattie? That was one of the main characters. That was the main character's name, Hetty. Hmm. Oh, I've got a word you might want. How about this? Basket. And what did she have in that basket? Hmm. <gasps> I don't think I'm going to tell you that one. But... I've got another word that might help you. How about this? Of 
cracked. So what you're going to do is you're going to give me one sentence that tells me what the problem was. You could start it off maybe by saying the problem was or Hetty's problem was something like that. And of course, on the other side, how did she fix the problem? And do you remember what we call that? That's called the solution. I'm going to write that down and you should too. Solution. Now, she wasn't able to really make those eggs go back together. But she did do something that made sure that her, her mom, and her dad had a good breakfast. Do you remember what that was? You go ahead and put that there. And I'm going to give you one hint. I'm going to spell one word for you. See if you can figure out what word that is. Apples. And then at the bottom of each side on of your notebook, I want you to give me just a little drawing to go with it. So you can put one there and you can put one there. I hope you enjoyed this story and I can't wait to see your writing. Be sure to send me a picture and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.